Hello and welcome to Sample Size Calculation with R. My name is Dr. Mark Williamson. I'll be walking you through this module. So the purpose of this module is to provide instruction and examples on sample size calculations on behalf of the Bird Corps. We'll be using R because it is a free open source software package. R is essentially the Swiss army knife of the statistical software world. If there's something that you want to do, you can do it in R somehow. It has an advantage over things like SAS, SPSS, um, and even GPower for sample size, just of all the things it can do. Uh, the downside is that it's open source in the sense that different people make different packages, so they packages don't always fit or work cohesively in the same format. So you often have to learn different ways of doing things for each package. But with all that being said, it is a great tool to use. So a little bit on my background. I'm a member of the Biostatistics Epidemiology and Research Design Corps at the University of North Dakota. This is part of the Dakota program, whose goal is to turn cancer research into cancer results. So part of this module is to help researchers design experiments um, with sophistication and ease. So let's jump into sample size calculation. It's really answering the big question when you're first designing an experiment, how many samples, that is animals or patients, subjects, do I need in my experiment? You don't wanna to go too small and miss uh, seeing a real effect. You also don't wanna to go too large and uh, waste resources or go above um, funding you have for this experiment. Just like Goldilocks, we want it to be just right, if possible. That's why we employ sample size calculation to get a best estimate based on information to um, get a target sample number. So just some uh, quick bits about sample size calculation. There's three big things that we need to know. First is effect size, which is uh, the magnitude of the effect under the alternative hypothesis. That is, how, how big of a difference between um, the null hypothesis, so nothing happening, and the alternative, something happening. Uh, power is the probability of detecting a true difference. It's also essentially one minus the probability of a false negative. Um, the higher the power, the more likely it is to detect a true effect that's there, but it uh, requires more samples. Uh, the default is 0.8, so we'll be using that throughout this module. Now, the next thing is significance level, also known as alpha. It's the probability of a type 1 error, also a false, known as a false positive. So the lower now the significance level, the more likely to avoid this false positive, but then you need more samples. So higher power, more samples. Lower significance level, more samples. And for alpha, the significance level, the standard setting is 0.05, which we'll use as well. Now, given these three pieces of information, effect size, power, and significance level, as well as some other uh, statistical test specific information, you can calculate sample size for most tests. So a little bit more detail about this effect size, because this is will be the important thing we'll need to calculate. Power and significance level are really just set by you, um, and I'll be using those defaults. But effect size is a property of the data you're using. Um, in the, the most simple explanation would be the effect size is um, a difference between the means of the null and alternative hypothesis over some sort of variation, like standard deviation. Uh, more complicated, complicated tests will have more complicated effect size calculation, but 
the basic principle is the same. Now, we can get this in three different ways, which are really just two different ways. Um, the first one and two are kind of the same is where you use background information. Um, A is, well, if you've done preliminary or trial data, and B is if uh, there's a parallel or similar study that do is doing the same kind of thing you're doing. You can get information like means, standard deviation, and so forth to calculate an effect size with that background information. The second main way, so C, is if you have no information. Um, you really can't uh, estimate any of those things based on other work. You can make uh, essentially an estimated guess of effect size. Uh, a lot of times this is put out by um, thinking them of them in broad categories like small, medium, and large and just going with one of those. Um, now different tests will have different values for effect size that make different values that make it's small, medium, or large. So you have to take those in account as well. So some things with uh, effect size within R. Now, um, in G Power, which is another uh, software, which is exclusively for sample size, you can enter details like means and standard deviation, and it'll turn out an effect size for you. R is not, that's not the case. You usually have to enter effect size yourself, so you have to calculate it first. Um, so if we're going to estimate it from background information, we'll need to calculate it. Otherwise, you just guess. Um, so I'll make sure I'm showing you different equations uh, to calculate effect size um, kind of by hand so you can plug it into R. Um, and then another disclaimer. So this is an R. I've uh, done a module in G power. And um, I'm using the same sort of examples and practice. And between the two software, it's not always clear how, how each of them, kind of the math underneath the hood, as it were, were uh, working or what equations they're using. So I did my best to make sure they matched up, but they don't always. Um, so if you have that kind of issue where you're looking at one uh, data set and two different programs are giving you two different answers. Uh, if you can't tell which one is right, I would go with the one that gives you the higher sample size just to be conservative, to make sure you don't um, go with one example software that gives you a lower sample size, but that's erroneous. So then you under detect when you do your actual experiment. So with that out of the way, let's talk about uh, a few pieces of statistics. I call these kind of the statistical rules of the game. Make sure you know these well enough as we're going through the module. So the first set is the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So the null, sometimes called H0, it's the default or boring state of your experiment. Um, you, and uh, specifically, you're running your statistical test to either reject this or fail to reject this. Like, the null hypothesis, if you're treating mice with a cancer drug and a control, the, the default, the null is there's no difference between the treatment and the control. Whereas the alternative, also known as H1, is usually what you're actually interested in, kind of the exciting state. Uh, there should be, there is a decrease in cancer uh, with the drug compared to the control. So. Uh, the next set here is tails. So there's a thing called a one-tailed test and a two-tailed test. Uh, the one tail looks for deviation in, from that null hypothesis in only one direction. So the idea would be, is variable x, say, larger than zero? Whereas the two-tailed test looks in either direction. It doesn't care. It says, is variable y different from zero? Different could mean higher or lower, or whatever your null is. And for some tests, you have to set whether it's one-tailed or two. So that's important to uh, know. Next, we have parametric versus non-parametric data. So parametric data, also known as normally distributed data, approximately fits a normal di distribution. Uh, sometimes you might have seen this thing called like the bell curve. That's 
a normal distribution. Um, and this tidiness or normalness of data is a lot of times a assumption for a lot of these tests and you can't use these tests unless your data is like that. Um, the alternative is non-parametric data. It doesn't need this assumption of normal distribution. Uh, however, it's less powerful. So you don't really want to use these tests unless you can't use a normally distributed, um, uh, or sorry, a parametric test. Uh, the fourth set here is paired versus unpaired, also known sometimes as independent versus uh, dependent data. So paired data, the categories are related to one another. Uh, these are often result as a before after situation, like the idea of say a patient here, I'm gonna call him red. Uh, you make a measurement before surgery and then you make another measurement after the surgery. That's paired, the, these, these points are not independent of each other. Whereas unpaired, they're not related you don't have to take that into account. So maybe you do an experiment where you test red before an experiment, but then you test another person blue after the experiment. Red and blue are not related to each other. So, and not, this isn't just like related in, you know, like siblings or something. I mean like causally related, uh, which includes um, siblings or the same person, but more broadly. Um, and then finally, we have dependent versus independent variable. This is a little bit more about um, designing your model, designing your test. Um, so a dependent variable depends on other variables, unsurprisingly. Um, and it's usually the variable the experimenter counts, cares about. Uh, it's also known as the why or the response variable. Um, so uh, in our mouse example, um, the determined variable was maybe uh, survival rate of those mice that we gave the treatment true, like our cancer rate. Um, then an independent variable doesn't depend on other variables and it's usually set by the experimenter and it's usually known as the X for predictor variable. And some tests have multiple X, multiple predictor variables. So um, whether or not those mice got a, the drug or the control would be a predictor variable, uh, independent variable. Okay, moving on here. So just some basics in R. Um, I, I'm assuming here you actually have used R before. Um, if not, I would suggest either refreshing yourself or introducing yourself using uh, one of these uh, following materials to get, get set up here. Um, you can download R here if you have not already done so. And additionally, um, if you've never used R Studio before, I would strongly suggest trying it out. It's an integrated development environment. So you can like write your scripts, run your tests, have output spit there, look, look in documents for help all in one. Uh, that really helps kind of bring everything together and keep you working um, intelligently and uh, efficiently. So you don't have to, but I strongly suggest that. So in the following uh, test that we'll be looking at, um, I will be organizing them by packages. Um, in, in my earlier GPower model, I kind of did them taxonomically based on variables, but I'm gonna do that based, this based on what you need to use in R to use them. And um, for each of them, I will have an introduction slide that gives kind of the description of the test, example, R code, effect size, and then uh, a result, which I kind of show R code and kind of walk you through how to get the sample size, how to find it and, and um, report it. And then I have, will have a practice slide with two or three questions that kind of give it a, um, a research question and it's for you to practice and work on your own and then that's followed by the answers, which have like the parameters, R code, everything from the practice that I tried to, to see how well you did. Okay, so the this is a table of the tests we'll be going through. I have broadly separated them into three groups. 
uh, green, which is kind of easy. It's all in this package power. These are pretty simple tests, pretty straightforward. Uh, then I have yellow, which uh, there really isn't a test normally, but you can modify as, and use uh, tests from the earlier uh, package and just uh, tweak it a little bit. And then finally, I'll be walking through red, which are more difficult tests and uh, they take a lot more kind of work to either set up or go through. Um, in, a, in addition here, I at the very end here, I'll be talking about generalized linear mixed models. I won't actually go through them in this module. I'm preparing a, a whole other module to tackle those all on their own because they're kind of big and important. They need their own space. So with that, um, that was the introduction. The next segment, we will start on those simple green tests. Thank you.